December 7th, 1941 was a day that will always be remembered in infamy by the American public. On this day, the callous bombings at Pearl Harbor shook the foundations of Western society and the whole world braced for what was to come, including the Japanese themselves. With the general quoted as saying, I fear we have awakened a sleeping giant and filled him with a terrible result. Although the American public were understandably deeply affected by this brazen act of violence on their own soil, there was yet another group within the general population that remembered this day even darker than most, those being the American-born children of Japanese immigrants, also known as the Nisei. Following the events in Pearl Harbor, the American government and public alike developed a deep paranoia and negative stigma for anyone that looked Japanese. It didn't matter how patriotic an American you were, if you looked anything close to Japanese, you were immediately treated with suspicion and contempt by most people. Although this stigma was largely true on the mainland, I do have to quickly interject and say that on the Hawaiian Islands, this was very different as two out of every five Hawaiians were Japanese American and there was, in general, a much more diverse mix of races, meaning little to no discrimination. With this being said, when the internment camp policy was introduced, the Japanese on the mainland were primarily affected due to their relatively minimal economic or social contribution and were given a suitcase to take to a camp where many would spend the rest of the war. The Japanese in Hawaii, however, faced a different reality. Due to their numbers and how important they were to the economic health of the island, the US government decided to only detain main community leaders and influencers, which numbered about 800, while leaving the rest to live under martial law and heavy surveillance. Anyways, now we're going to fast forward one or so year from initial internment. The US now feels it has the Japanese American internal threat contained and their armies are now entrenched in vicious fighting in both the European and Pacific fronts against both the Japanese and the Germans. Slowly but surely, the US begins to see the Nisei as a potential resource and recruited many to fill the ranks of translators, interrogators and even spies. Slowly but surely, the government becomes a bit more relaxed and in 1943 rolls out a program to enlist masses of young Japanese American males to fill out the ranks of a whole new Nisei only regiment called the 442nd. As is to be expected, asking people who you've imprisoned and whose families you've imprisoned to volunteer as a fighting force doesn't always go down well, which is why initially on the mainland, the draft goal of 3000 went unfulfilled and only 1,256 men volunteered. Conversely on Hawaii, where internment camps were less of an issue, many Japanese American Nisei saw it as an opportunity to prove their patriotism for the country and eagerly signed up. Hawaii thus smashed the 1,500 men draft goal with over 10,000 men volunteering. Ultimately, in the initial formation of the 442nd Infantry Combat Regiment, the US took a total of 800 Nisei from the mainland and 3,000 from Hawaii, all of which joined the pre-existing 100th Infantry Battalion, which was the first Japanese American only unit that had been formed in 1942. The 100th was later absorbed into the 442nd Regiment and became the largest Nisei unit in World War II, with only the officers being white. As the months went by, more and more Nisei eventually succumbed to US recruiters and the regiment continued to grow by the thousands to a max of around 14,000 men. In order to avoid potential terrible treatment by Japanese captors, Nisei were generally forbidden from fighting in the Pacific theater. Although as stated before, the US did use Japanese translators and interrogators for their intelligence service. With that said, upon completing their training, this newly formed and newly reinforced 442nd was shipped off from mainland America and bound for the shores of Italy. Despite common misconceptions, the invasion of Italy was no cakewalk. There were many highly trained German divisions in the area and the 442nd 
bore the full brunt of a thoroughly confused enemy. Regardless of this heavy resistance, the 442nd trudged along and kept driving the enemy further and further north in the months of June and July of 1944. They kept repeating this process and traded with the Germans blow for blow until the days of late October, where they were to mount one of the most famous rescues in American World War II history. It was October 29th when the 442nd were finally told why they were being made to attack the German line so ferociously. It was because the Germans had cut off an American unit, the 141st Regiment of the 36th Infantry, otherwise known as the Lost Battalion. The Germans themselves were confused as well, and only realized the situation when they spotted air supplies being parachuted down to the trapped Americans. With this realization, the fighting naturally became even more intense than it originally was, and the men of the 442nd plunged deeper and deeper into German lines, desperate to poke a hole in it and rescue the Lost Battalion. There reached a point in the battle where multiple Nisei companies had their backs to the wall and could not move an inch away from their foxholes without drawing fire. Upon realizing this, one by one the men began to rise, until eventually the full force of the Nisei began charging toward the German grenadiers screaming Banzai. Yes, I know, it's very out of place for the European theater. Despite the Nisei taking massive casualties, the brazen attack had broken the German defensive line and despite a desperate defense, the German grenadiers were routed in disarray and the Nisei had won the day. This was all thanks to the 3rd Battalion of the 442nd and by the time they reached the trapped Texan unit they fought so hard for, they had lost 800 men, with one platoon in Company I of the 3rd Battalion only having two men left standing. Not a single company in the entire 3rd Battalion had over 100 riflemen left, and ultimately, the Japanese Americans, through their brave efforts, managed to save the remnants of the Lost Battalion. The 442nd, after this, continued their march northwards and had their depleted battalions replenished. Some notable events that happened after the rescue of the Lost Battalion included the first US capture of the German midget submarine, spotted by a Nisei soldier after stating he saw something that looked like a weird animal in the water, as well as the roaming Nisei detachment being the first to discover the concentration camp of the Kau and liberate its satellite camps. Fun fact, this roaming unit was actually called the 552nd Field Artillery Battalion and supported nearly two dozen army units along a front that spanned 1,100 miles wide along Germany. They completed every single one of their objectives from their 52 assignments. All in all, the largely outcasted and ostracized Japanese American unit in World War II managed to pull off something no other unit could. They were the most decorated in US military history, earning a total of 9,428 Purple Hearts, 4,000 Bronze Stars, 8 Presidential Unit Citations, and 21 Medals of Honor. They were involved in all facets of the European theater, and in 2012, every surviving member of the unit was awarded the Légion d'Honneur for their actions contributing to the liberation of France. With that said, there was only one Nisei who earned the Medal of Honor during or just after World War II, and this was due to the public's continuing perception of the Japanese as being evil. Although the European theater American vets of all different races respected the Nisei immensely, there were still plenty who stigmatized any Japanese they met, especially those that had survived the Pacific theater, and many Nisei only received their Medals of Honor and various other awards decades after the fact, due to these racial tensions. The Japanese themselves during World War II were barbarians and that's not a disputed fact in history. It's just unfortunate that the brave men of the 442nd were stereotyped in such a way that negated their many achievements on the front lines. In order to honor these brave men, I ask that you type a story or anecdote you have of any Nisei veterans you, your father, or your families ever met. Be sure to share this video as well if there's anyone you know that would benefit from a commemoration video like this. And as with most of my videos, I've only really brushed the surface. So let me know if you want to learn more about these American beasts, whether they be more about the Nisei in Europe, like in this video, or the ones who served in the Pacific. 
And just before you go, guys, if you want to check out all the sources I use for these videos, do go check out our Discord. If you're on Facebook, like our Facebook page. And if you do want to help support us more than you already are by watching this video, then make sure you go check out my Patreon page. And I do want to thank all of my current patrons, old and new. Anyways, guys, as always, thank you so much for watching and I hope you learned something new.